All right, everyone, welcome back to Schmatz Outdoors. Uh, we're gonna do a little add-on to the coyote series here. So I've had a few questions about how I mark my coyote sets and what the gray electric fence post is for. So we're gonna do a little more detailed dive. When I did my coyote set making video, I must not have done this in enough detail to really explain what was going on here. So we're gonna go through a little more detail. I'm not gonna make a coyote set here. I'm just gonna, I have an example one set in here so you guys can see what's going on. Uh, I'm gonna explain what the pole is, how I mark the pole, and why I use the pole. That's kind of the three things that I've been getting questions on here. So so we're gonna go right, start right into it here. Uh, it's kind of early fall here. So I got my little food plot here that didn't do very good. I had a lot of weed issues and whatever, but um, we're gonna use these two corn stalks and this thistle as my backer. So honestly, like I don't typically set along corn fields because they're harvested, right? So I, they're, it'd be just stubble. So if anything, I'd almost be setting this up the other way, but don't get hung up on the type of set, where it's located, any of that. That's not really why I'm showing this. I am today going to explain why I use gray electric fence posts and how I use them. All right. So when I go to make my set, I, I, you know, I look along the edge, you know, like even right over here, if a guy broke this one off, you know, a guy can make a pretty good set right down here, like right in here, use this as my backing. Um, what I have today is I actually just threw a second trap over here. Um, I'm not gonna set this one, cause I'm not gonna show, but you know, like if I was gonna do two sets, one there, one here, they're about eight foot apart if I had to guess, nine foot maybe at the most, you know, a guy could go down a little farther. But when I'm doing doubles, I typically only use one pole and I'm going to kind of show why or how I do that. Um, it's a pretty simple process for that too. So when I kneel down to make my set or before I kneel down to make my set here, you know, before I start digging my hole, do anything like that, what I do, I take this rope and I'm not going to be able to show it real good here. Can I hook it on here? So I keep this little chunk of rope in my bag, my trapping bag. And all I have is a loop on each end of it. You know, like a one inch loop there, nothing real fancy about that. Um, that just allows me to hook it on my pole, as you see here. Hope you guys can see that on my pole. And then I use my stake driver. So when I go to make my set, before I even put my trap down, dig a hole, do any of that, I mark it. So what I do is I just take my stake driver here. Oh, try to get that on camera here. I take my stake driver. I, I slide my piece of rope up on there. It's a lot easier to do with two hands. And then I just stab my stake driver in right where I want my uh, trap to be. Now, I take my rope here and my gray electric fence post. Okay, keep an eye on that. I'm just walking out into this corn. It can be corn, it can be a brush row, a fence row, woods, anything. The only thing that I found is I try not to go out into the open fields that direction. I did that a couple years and I, I did it on just a few test sets and I actually didn't make a single catch in any of the test sets that I went out into the wide open field. Makes it a lot easier to see your sets because I can see the pole, but I don't know if the coyotes didn't like it or if it just was coincidence that I didn't make catches in those spots. So I typically try to go out into the structure I'm trapping along. Um, and again, I'm not wandering around for half an hour out here. I'm literally putting it on here. I put start it on here, grab the other end, grab my great fence post, and I'm walking out in here. And then typically what I do is I just try to go like straight behind my trap here. We're gonna slide this in on my fence post. I'm sorry, I'm doing this one handed so I can film. And I just kind of get that taut. And then I stand my fence post in and I push it down. All right. So now you can see my rope is on my post. My post ain't standing real straight. And that's somewhat important. Okay, so my rope. So now I know that that post 
is exactly the length of that rope which in my case this rope it was just a piece of scrap rope and from the end of the eye here to the end of the eye over there it's 10 foot and one inch I actually have never even measured it until like two minutes ago here but this rope is 10 feet so now like if an animal is running along the edge they're a lot not very likely to notice that uh, stake standing out there all right if I'm gonna run two sets in one spot I mentioned I used the same pole um, and we're, we're gonna get into why I'm using the pole here in just a second but I'm just gonna go over a little bit on how I place my pole to begin with here and then we'll uh, I'll, I'll get into a little more detail of why I'm using the pole okay so this one here right now is marked I could definitely go over here and put my stake driver right here with my rope on it and pull straight back and put a second pole in there I don't know I tend to actually forget a handful of these poles out in the field every year I get my trap pulled and then I just forget to walk out there and pick it up so I just try to minimize the amount of them I have out in, out in the field at any given time and I also use these same fence poles for trapping muskrats if you guys have watched any of my out on the line videos you'll see that I use these same poles what we're gonna do is I'll actually show you so I have this piece of tape on my uh, on all my four foot fence posts that just stops my uh, muskrat trap from sliding off the bottom of my pole but I use the exact same pole whether I'm marking coyote sets or uh, making muskrat sets the only thing I do is I try to maybe find one that doesn't have a lot of mud on it or something like that but I don't get that carried away all right so this pole is exactly 10 feet and one inch from my set over there but it's not from this set that's right over here so what I'm gonna do is I'm pretty good at eyeballing this so I don't need to even go straight back let's make a point of this too so I went straight back to show you guys from my set straight back you know perpendicular to the rows I can go anywhere I can get this hidden so if there's like a steel fence post right here in the you know in the fence line I'll put my pole right next to that steel fence post or next to a tree or somewhere just so it you know try to hide it the best I can you know like right here if I put this right here I got this corn stalk right in front of it you know it kind of hides it a little bit right so like this would be a better spot than it would be if it was over here and again I'm just trying to keep it out of sight a little bit is all I'm doing all right so we got two sets here we're gonna use one pole for two sets so what I'm doing is I'm kind of angling my rope from that set and keeping in mind where that set is I feel like I'm gonna have to be about here so I mark one set and now I leave my rope on my pole then I come up here pull out my stake driver now swing over here and I was exactly perfect I mean it, it could be two inches that way would make me a little happier but you can see my rope is tight so now my this set is exactly 10 feet and this set is exactly 10 feet okay so that's how I use one pole to mark two sets but you have to keep them you know somewhat reasonably close together if that one was four foot farther down you know my rope would be more like to here and then over to there well I don't really like it that close to the edge of this uh, you know the edge where I feel like the animals are going to be running right so I like to keep it back if I was going to go even to the end over here say I was going to go to here or even use this single one which would actually be more likely what I would do my trap would be right in here you know so I could dig a dirt hole trap is about here maybe eight inches or a little more behind the backing I would actually go out here and put a, another pole if I have my set that far away just so you know my gray fence post doesn't end up being so close to the edge of the field where I feel like they're gonna be running all right so that's how I locate my pole so this little rope stays in my trapping bag I use a, a trapping bag on the side of my bag I did a video on this so you guys can go back and look at maybe in last summer the summer before it come out uh, all my baits and lures are all kind of on the side of the bag inside the bag is my sifter my peat moss my uh, post or my hole driver and this piece of rope 
and my pan covers are all on the inside of my bag. So they stay away from all my bait and lures, but this rope, like I said, it just rides around in the bottom of that bag. And what I do here is again, before I even make my set, I, before I even set my trap even, I'll take and I'll set that. And then I just take that piece of rope and I'd throw it right back in the bottom of my bag. So it, I've never lost it out of all these years. Like I said, I have a pretty good system. It is green, which kind of sucks. I would recommend maybe using a brighter color if you were going to, uh, if I was gonna make a new one, you know, even a, a white or an orange or something just to make it a little more visible would be nice. But again, I've never lost it. Uh, like I said, I did measure it now, so I actually know how long it is if I had happened to lose it in the mid middle of the season here, but all right, we're gonna get into the main thing that I get questions for. Why do I use that fence post? I use that fence post to mark my set so I can find it. You know, if I'm walking along the edge and I have my dirt hole over here, I'd be able to see my dirt hole and I could, you know, my trap isn't gonna blend completely in and I know where it is. I'm checking them every day here in Minnesota, so you get used to seeing it. But when you get some snow, which I typically do, so I typically start, usually it's, you know, the second weekend of our season is when I start. So like the last weekend in October, so a couple days into October, they're the last couple days of October and then through November, through the Friday after thing or Sunday after Thanksgiving, that's my trapping season that I run. In that month span in November here, and I'm in West Central Minnesota, we get snow, period. We do every year. So the trying to find your sets after you get snow, it can be very difficult. And even with my post, it still could take me up to like a half an hour to find your set sometimes. Uh, I had one last year, The I should have videoed this a little bit while I was pulling it, but the fence row that I had my uh, set on, and that's part of it in this area, so I'm right up against South Dakota here. The It's more wide open farmland, so I'm trapping fence rows, not as much you know block of woods or anything like that. But along these fence rows where the coyotes are running you know, from maybe one block of woods to the next or a slough to another slough or something like that, if you get like a westerly wind and your set's on the east side, you could have three foot of snow over your uh, set with only an inch of actual snow if we get some wind with it. You know, it only snows an inch, but it blows a half a mile worth of snow. It all catches in that fence row and now you can't find your set. Uh, so I had one last year, I spent a half an hour digging it out because it was more than four foot deep in the snow. I told you I use a four foot gray electric fence post. I couldn't even find my fence post. It took me a while, like 10 minutes, just to walk into essentially my fence post. And then once I found my fence post, then I found my trap pretty easily after that. But I had to do quite a bit of shovel in the snow to actually get it out of there. All right, so we're gonna show a little bit here. We're gonna have some fake snow. There it is, there's my fake snow. So I'm gonna shut you guys off for just a second here. We're gonna add some snow to this set and then we're gonna see how many of you guys can find my set without uh, using my setup here. All right guys, so I got my fake snow put down here. So I want you guys to be honest and show me or try and tell me if you knew where my uh, trap was before I actually show you where it is. And don't lie, I'll know, all right. So here's my snow. I knocked my backer down just so it's a little tough, you know, to show it a little bit better because otherwise, you know, there was only one spot in here where it was holding my sheet up. So I knocked my backer down, which is actually typical if you make a catch because they'll knock out, you know, a catch circle down is flat. You know, I'll typically try to build a little bit back up for a backer, but it isn't typically, you know, after the first time, it's not gonna be a nice tall standing corn stalk. It's gonna be, you know, a little clump of dirt. All right, where's my trap in here, guys? I'm not gonna show you where my pole is either. All right, so you, some of you guys might be able to tell, but I want you to put, put it down in the comments if you know where my trap is. But if I'm coming up to a set after it's snowed, this is what it typically looks like. I mean, obviously this is a sheet, but you get the picture of this is snow. 
it, it kind of levels everything off real nice especially if you're on uh, you know like the downwind side of a grove or anything like that the wind kind of blows over and it just kind of the snow settles in there real beautifully you know and if the deer haven't tracked it all up and actually that makes it worse sometimes so this is why I got my fence post this is a hundred percent why snow when I get snow you could spend a half an hour kicking around with your feet in here trying to find your coyote set and again I know where it is because I uh, you know put the sheet down but like I said you could have a very hard time finding your set in this that's what my pole is for here okay so now I got my pole right here I got my stake driver so when I come to pull this set I'll walk out here and I'll put my rope on my uh, fence posts then I take the other end put it on my stake driver and then I just pull my stake driver tight to the other my rope because I know that my trap is that distance from that pole so now when I'm going to find my set my set is in an arc somewhere the length of that rope from that pole so what I start doing is I just start poking bam there's my trap and that that happens more times than not that even through a foot of snow my trap is still working under there because I use dry peat moss underneath you know to keep my trap firing the snow over the top typically does not stop the trap from firing if nothing else if that trap happens to be set off here I'll see if I can show you what it is okay so if that trap happens to be set off and I don't know where it is I start doing this I hope you guys can hear that you get the metal on metal clink you know over here I get nothing it's soft clink 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 and now I know where my trap is so I know where to dig okay it's that simple like I said when I'm going to find my sets all I do and even if this is under two or three feet of snow I just stab my uh, post there my stake driver and I leave it stand there then I get the shovel out and start shoveling and I'll shovel down until I get to where my trap is you know now it's set off I know where it is if I lose it again I can pull my rope back tight again and start poking around until I find it again but you think you know where it is you know and sometimes you guys might forget so there's this roll of corn some of you guys might have guessed my trap was back over here because that makes sense it's in line with that corn but I had it out from my backer you know eight ten inches because you know and there was that little thistle out of here as well so I had it it was probably a foot out from this row of corn so if you thought it was in that row of corn you start poking you know if I didn't have my rope and I start poking back here where this row of corn is you're never gonna find it you know you might get lucky and step on it and set it off before you're ever gonna find it poking around okay so that's the number one reason why I have that out and it's very critical to get that put in the right spot you can see my rope was tight I just pull the rope tight towards me start poking with my stake driver just kind of keeping the rope tight as I go clink right in the middle of my trap set it off all right so I hope that answers your guys questions a little bit of what the great fence post is how I set it um, and what I use it for right so again like even standing here you know most coyotes or deer or anything they ain't gonna pay any attention to my fence post standing right here you know and I do try to hide it if it's just a pure grass fence row you know it's a little tough to hide it just it stands out but I still make catches in a lot of those sets you know it doesn't have to be hid that well it's just like I said that 10 foot off of where the animals are traveling um, after a day or two any scent should be off of that I wear latex gloves when I'm touching any of my coyote gear uh, basically all my coyote traps I get washed up a week ago um, so I won't be touching any traps unless I'm wearing latex gloves I'm actually gonna put a different pair on because I've been sweating like crazy in these before I pick up these two traps now and then I'll actually gonna spray my traps off I just use the hose to spray them off and then I hang them on a tra on a rack they're setting the racks over here but anyway so uh, finding my trap after it snows number one reason why the stake is there all right guys so if you guys have any questions on why I put my pole out there what I'm doing anything like that leave them in the comments below uh, if you guys are doing something different to mark your sets you know if you rely on just GPS or something like that 
uh, put those comments down below as well. Like I said, we're all here to try and help each other out. If there's a better way than what I'm doing, I'm all for it. Uh, I've just found that the GPS apps like Onyx and them, they're not accurate enough, you know, to get you within six inches of finding my trap. Um, yeah, otherwise, uh, I do pull my pole, like I said, when I pull my set, I'll yank the trap out of there, walk out and pull the pole out and throw it back in my truck and take it with me. I do forget a few every year, but I put my sets a lot of times in the same spots year over year. So I just find it the next year and I use the same pole. If I leave it there for one year, I just use the same pole when I uh, make my set the next time. Um, all right, I think that's all I got for you. Um, again, I like to hear your uh, thoughts on this in the comments down below. Otherwise, I'll see you guys on the next Schmatz Outdoors video.